Welcome to Film Fix and a look at how Todd Phillips in his movie Joker creates sympathy for the devil. How did Joker make audiences empathize with a psychotic killer? I believe the answer lies in its structure. Let's do it. And of course, spoilers ahead. Joker is a story about Arthur Fleck and his journey to become one of popular culture's favorite comic book villains, the Joker. The film was widely praised and I felt did an excellent job in earning empathy from the audience for a character that essentially becomes a psychotic killer. Many talking points have been raised in the aftermath of this film around political and mental health issues specifically. But to understand how Todd Phillips created such empathy, a closer examination of the film's structure reveals how. I started by applying Dan Harmon's story circle to break down Joker. We'll explain in a little detail what Dan Harmon's story circle is here in this analysis, but if you want a bit of a background and additional insight, click here to watch my video where we use Dan Harmon's story circle to break down the matrix and detail more about this concept. There will also be a link in the description below. So. Let's dive in and break down Todd Phillips' Joker. At the top of Harmon's story circle is you. The protagonist exists in their reality. We witness their status quo, their zone of comfort. This is their life, a life that the audience can understand. Arthur's status quo is one of emptiness. He's lonely and deeply unhappy. He lives with a physical disability and an uncontrollable laugh reflex to stressful situations. We see that he's emotionally on the edge during a session with his therapist. We get the sense that this is a regular thing. He's beaten up. He's a grown man living with his sick mother. He has no friends. He's unhappy. This is his life. Moving across to number two is need. There's something not quite right with the protagonist's situation. The protagonist wants something. We set up the potential danger or conflict in our story. Arthur wants to be loved. It's clear that his feelings of neglect stem from a lack of father figure, and he's looking in some small way to replacing the love that he never received from an absent father. Arthur hopes that his desire to entertain will earn him adoration. He's a professional clown and a wannabe stand-up comedian, a way to fill the void in his heart, which is little by little being filled instead by frustration and anger. His hero, late night talk show host Murray Franklin, is his surrogate father figure, maybe the inspiration in his desire to start a stand-up career. Go, the start of the journey, the push out of the door into an unfamiliar situation. The adventure begins. We've seen the old world, now this clashes with the new world. The trigger for Arthur's journey is when his asshole work colleague, Randall, hands him a gun for his protection. He accidentally reveals the gun during a children's performance and gets fired. This, along with another beating, pushes him over the edge. He kills three Wall Street guys. He's definitely in a whole new world now. Search. Sink or swim time. We're out of our comfort zone for real. Our protagonist has to adapt to their new surroundings. To move forward, their change must begin. Now that he's started to fight back against a world that's treated him so unfairly, Arthur has started to find the courage to stand up for himself, pushing back against his former colleagues and therapist. Things move forward for him personally when he finds the courage to approach his neighbour, starting a relationship with her, and also to get up on stage to try his comedy act. His killing of the three men has drawn lots of media attention and hearing that the everyday people of Gotham are siding with the killer, sparking an anti-rich wave throughout the city, Arthur feels a sense of achievement. Is all this what he's been craving? Find. This is the midpoint. We've been building up to this pivotal moment where the protagonist finds what they wanted. It's also the protagonist's low point, total vulnerability. Something happens where they must make a conscious choice to move forward, otherwise they could stay in their current state. Arthur finds a letter that his mother intends to send to Thomas Wayne, the city's foremost billionaire. She's always talked of Thomas Wayne one day helping them, 
pulling them out of poverty and now Arthur knows why. In the letter, his mother claims that Arthur is Thomas Wayne's son. Arthur has found the father he's always missed. What does he do with that information? Take. This is where the protagonist pays a price. Change has a cost. We must go through this to make the journey that much more meaningful. And Arthur pays a heavy price on multiple fronts. Firstly, his attempt to contact Thomas Wayne fails. His mother is labelled a crazy woman and Thomas Wayne's paternal claim denied. Arthur's killing of the Wall Street elites brings the police to his apartment. As a consequence, his mother suffers a stroke. On top of that, his failed effort at stand-up is belittled by his hero and imaginary father figure, Murray. At this moment, Arthur has potentially lost his mother and two father figures in quick succession. Arthur confronts Wayne, who tells Arthur he's actually adopted, something Arthur then confirms at the mental asylum. He also loses his relationship, which, it turns out, wasn't real. Looking at Joker through the story circle lens, it becomes clear that Todd Phillips' goal to get the audience to be empathetic to Arthur's journey is to constantly beat him. He's paying a heavy cost, turn after turn after turn. He's lost his mother, two fathers, his job, his girlfriend, not to mention the emotional support that therapy and medication kinda provided. And here's where we see that in this story circle structure. We've spent a disproportionately lengthy amount of time, in film terms, taking from Arthur. Around 30 minutes of the film, we take and take and take from Arthur. The audience begins to believe that no wonder he's messed up. He's lost practically everything that held him together. Perhaps that's what's needed to get the audience to feel empathy with a killer. We understand the price that Arthur has paid. Return, bringing it home. The protagonist steps up. The benefits of change are evident. We have the tools to step into the new status quo. Arthur has truly hit rock bottom. His mother, the only real person he has in his life, has lied to him all these years. He maybe feels that he's not losing her, but he never really had her. Arthur kills his mother. For the first time, he kills with intent. His transformation is complete. Change. The protagonist is now capable of change. They demonstrate this in a final, meaningful moment, proof that they're forever altered. Arthur is free. For the first time, he's genuinely happy. Now, he must sever all ties with his old life to cement the change. As a final revenge on his old life, he kills Randall and does so with a smile on his face. Then comes the big sign-off. Based on his two minutes of viral fame, he's invited onto Murray's show. At the show, he kills Murray, removing his father figure and last remnants of his tortured past. He's now completely free. We spend a longer time at the change point of the circle as a reward for the excessive cost of the change. Another 30 minutes of the film, in fact. We're going to enjoy this change and it's satisfying because we paid a heavy cost. Arthur's journey was to hit rock bottom and stay rock bottom. Can you blame somebody for becoming so twisted when they've lost everything? Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit thumbs up. It helps these videos be discovered and also helps grow the channel. Please also subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss out on future videos. It would really mean a lot. Thanks. See you on the next one.